Good day to all of you. Aren't you glad that at Savior School we're still able to go back to our June to March school year? We've had a very hot summer, but thankfully we were able to end our classes last March and have a real summer break. Now we are just a few days away from school opening for school year 2021 to 2022. This year, as you know, we are observing so many anniversaries. First of all, the entire country is marking 500 years since 1521, the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines with the celebration of that first Mass in the Visayas. So it is an opportunity for us to reflect on the legacy of Spain in our country, including the legacy of our Christian faith, and how we might share that with others. And that is why the theme that we are given in the church is Gifted to Give, a very important milestone for our country. At the same time, there are other anniversaries that we are marking. Our own Savior School is marking 65 years. We were founded in 1956 in Quiapo, in Echague. We stayed there a few years and then we moved to San Juan in 1960, actually the Christmas of 1959, and we have been here ever since. Our campus in New Valley opened in 2012, and this is now year 10 of operations at Saver School New Valley. So again, a time for thanksgiving for all the blessings we have received in the past and an occasion to reflect on what we might contribute to the wider community as we mark these anniversaries. And if you think that's it, there's more coming. This year is also an Ignatian year. For the Worldwide Society of Jesus, 2021 is very important because it is also the 500th anniversary of the Cannonball Movement in the life of our founder, St. Ignatius Loyola. Isn't it interesting that the same year, 1521, when Christianity first made its appearance in the Philippines is also the, the year when St. Ignatius was injured very violently by that cannonball and it led to his conversion. So the Worldwide Society of Jesus is marking this big anniversary through reflection on the conversion experience of St. Ignatius. So for this Ignatian year, there has been a logo developed for the Worldwide Society of Jesus. It's simple, it's the name of Ignatius, but with the S stylized to show 500 years. And in the Chinese province of the Jesuits, they have a variation of this, adding the words, Qinian Yi Na Jie, Yi Na Jie is Ignatius, transliterated, Kui Yi Wu Pai Nian, Kui Yi meaning conversion, or to take refuge 500 years the moment being marked in this big ignatian anniversary is the cannonball moment in the life of saint ignatius if you look at this picture you might get an idea of how painful it was for a cannonball to strike his bare leg and then because he was still very vain how many times it had to be operated on without anesthesia because he wanted it to be perfect. He, he didn't want to be limping for the rest of his life. But that was because the conversion had not yet fully taken place. He retired to his home, the castle of Loyola, and he convalesced there for about nine months. Nothing to do in his room but heal. And there was nothing else to read but the life of Christ and the lives of the saints. And that is when it starts to happen. From being a military soldier, he wanted now to become a soldier for Christ. If St. Francis could do it, if St. Dominic could do it, he could do it too. So that's when the conversion happens. In a way, it begins with a life-changing moment, the cannonball, but it shifts to his internal life after that. And then he devotes himself to following Jesus Christ. So he was able to see his life and the whole world in a new light, in a different way. And that is why the theme of this Ignatian year is to see all things new in Christ. We are living in the time of the pandemic and we are being invited to see everything in a new light. Not only our own experience of trying to survive, mourning those who have died, praying for those who are sick, 
but also beyond that, to see what is happening in the world and how our lives will change now and after the pandemic. Education will change now and in the future. Many things we have been used to will no longer come back. And that is why I find the theme very appropriate, to see all things new in Christ. We are invited to let go of all our biases, uh, our past certainties, and just live in the present moment, embrace what is new, and move forward together. So this is the broad context we find ourselves in. And still, it's not done. There's one more major area that I need to tell you about, and that is the direction in the Philippine province of the Jesuits. Locally, the Jesuits have decided that for the next three years, we would like to focus on five priority areas, five thrusts in what we are calling a revised province plan. In a way, five loaves. It's like offering our five loaves to the Lord so that the Lord can work His miracles. So five areas of focus, of priority, that we feel are very important for all of us to collaborate on. First of all, and I will go through this quickly, you see a slide of the five directions. First of all, to foster Jesuit integrity and accountability. It says Jesuit, but it's not only for us Jesuits. It's for all of us Jesuits and our lay mission partners. In a world where there are so many leaders that do not inspire us, that sometimes even provide us with bad examples, we are invited to foster integrity, transparency, accountability in our mission. This is the foundation. So throughout the year, even the next few years, we'd like to focus on that in our formation programs for both the Jesuits and our lay partners. And that's, that includes you. An inv invitation to examine our lives, whether we are being good examples for our youth, where, whether we are building a world that we can proudly leave to them when it is their time. Second, to feed the hungry, especially children, and to create sustainable livelihoods. As you can imagine, this is an offshoot of the pandemic. Many people are hungry. Maybe that's why there's also higher incidence of crime. Many people have lost their jobs. So there is no stable income. What can we do to help, to alleviate this situation? And we can all think of examples uh, by which we can help in this direction. Third, to summon our youth to engage citizenship. The elections are coming next year. We want to make sure our young people, our young, including our young alumni, who are already eligible to vote, will go out and register and be aware of what's happening in our country so that we can make good choices when the elections come around next year. Fourth, to build faith-based hope and resiliency. It's easy to lose hope, to be in despair, given everything happening around us. And yet as Christians, we hold on to the graces of the resurrection, the victory won for us by Jesus Christ. And we want to nurture that hope and that spirit of resiliency, especially in our young people, so that we can prepare them for a better future. Finally, a theme that has been there for quite a while already, to cultivate personal and institutional ecological conversion. Many of our environmental practices were set aside during the pandemic because of the urgency and we needed to, to do things quickly and conveniently. So we started using so much plastic again. And then now we're generating so much medical waste. You know? And we, this cannot go on. We have to take care of our environment. We have to do what we can to limit our carbon emissions and combat climate change, etc. So in a nutshell, we have these five thrusts, five areas that the Philippine Jesuits would like to focus on this year and in the coming years. To give you a few examples of how we can already put this into practice, I can share with you things that are happening here at Xavier School. 
Do you know that we have our own community pantry? That is such a hopeful development. No? One young lady started it in Manginhawa Street. Now there are thousands of community pantries around the country. Our very own teachers started one here in school to serve our security and agency personnel, our janitors, to give them better food, better nutrition on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have a classroom on the ground floor of the junior high school building where we have been receiving donations for more than one month now. And we have even expanded to serving the staff of Mary the Queen Parish and ICA. They are also welcome to come and take what they need for the day. That's the community pantry which you are very welcome to support. Another effort at helping to feed the hungry, to provide livelihood, is our partnership with Mayani. You may have heard of them. They work with the Department of Tourism to link buyers with farmers from the north who are producing so much fruits and vegetables but unable to get them to the right markets here in the NCR. So twice a month, there is what they call the Grand Baksakan, when vegetables are available at very cheap prices. We have offered them the use of our EED gym, our Early Education Department gym. That is where all the vegetables land and where they do sorting and packing and then delivery to the pickup points uh, elsewhere in the metropolis. So a good way to use our space that also contributes to the livelihood of so many Filipino farmers. That's Miami. And these are examples of helping to feed the hungry and provide livelihoods. How do we foster hope and resiliency? Well, many of us have started already getting vaccinated and Savior School would like to support that effort no, to get as many people vaccinated as soon as possible. And so our high school gym is being used by a third party, Medgrocer, so that the vaccines ordered by the private sector can be administered here. So those of you who belong to those groups, you just might be going to Saver School to get your vaccines. Engage citizenship, one of the five trusts. We are already gathering the senior high school units of the Jesuit schools around the country to talk about how we can raise awareness about the national situation and the importance of next year's elections. We will roll out a campaign to get our young alumni registered, even our young faculty, so that they can participate in the political process next year. And that is just one step. More importantly, we need to reflect together on the state of our nation and what we can all do to make things better. I know that we are politically divided. We all have our beliefs, our opinions, but we need to move beyond that, to respectfully listen to each other, dialogue with each other, understand each other. And in the end, even if we disagree and still make different political choices, we would, we would have at least achieved a better understanding of each one, of where we are coming from and what our priorities are in terms of governance and national development. Moving now to more specific things that will affect our life as a school this current school year. We are entering a second year of Excel, Excel 2.0. Of course, this means that we will improve on what we were doing uh, last year. And you will hear more about that today as, as this orientation proceeds. But I can share with you some specific developments that might excite, excite you. Even as we start the school year online, we are thinking about hybrid learning. Isn't it very good news that there are now vaccines for teenagers, for those age 12 and above? That means that Perhaps within the school year, the government will allow in-person classes again. So, since January, our teams in school have been trying to visualize that. What will it look like when students can return to school? We know that maybe they still have to wear their masks, observe distancing, observe all these protocols. So, we're planning that very, very carefully. We cannot have everybody back all at the same time. Some will be 
in school, some will remain at home. I can assure you that in the first phase, you will have a choice. We will not force you to come to school, even if the government allows it, if you're not yet comfortable doing that. But we will endeavor to do it uh, as soon as we, uh, we can, as much as possible. And here, you know, Saber School New Valley has led the way. I can share with you that uh, last school year, in January to March, Laguna was already on MGCQ. So that they, they had more possibilities. Those aged 15 and up were allowed to go up. So after securing the necessary permissions, we launched first a learning hub. We identified students who were having a very hard time staying at home, keeping up with Excel, with online classes. You know, to make the long story short, where the home environment was not ideal, especially for many of our full scholars, the Zuluaga scholars in the high school. So we brought them to school. The high school canteen became their learning hub. It was still the same, it was still Excel, but they had more space they could use the school's internet. So that went on for about two months or more, and we're very happy to be able to do that. In March, for the year-end activities of grade 10 and grade 12, the recollections, we were able to offer it in school, something like a whole day and a half, where a group of students, maybe about 40 of them, were in school, while the, the, the rest were following online. So there was a camera uh, online following all the activities, streaming it to those who were at home, but the activities were also taking place in person in school. So New Valley has led the way for us in this area. So with that experience, we will build and we will design it so that the more we can do that, the more we can address the mental health concerns of our teenage learners. It's very important as we all know. You know. This is the age when they need to be with their friends and yet we have kept them at home for more than one year already. So the more we're able to do that, starting with formation activities, the more we will be able to give a better experience to our students. Another development is for our varsity athletes. I'd just like to uh, let you know that in both campuses, we have been trying to continue with the training of our athletes, even if it's all done online. And because of that, we, have, we continue to engage all our outside coaches. So this is just a heads up to all the athletes and the families that you will be invited to contribute to a fund so that this program can continue, so that the coaches can continue being available to your particular group. Finally, something to look forward to in the next school year is a development at Saber School New Valley. We are going to offer a new track in senior high school in the New Valley campus. This has already been approved in principle by our Board of Trustees and that is a technical vocational track in senior high school. The target market is still graduates of public schools. So as you know, we have graduates of public elementary schools who are at Saber School New Valley for high school, junior and senior high, but they're all in the academic track. Now we will offer senior high track after all our years of experience running Erda Tech. The beauty of this model is that because of our location in New Valley, we have partners who can provide the technical training. There is Dual Tech, there is Anihan, there is Toyota Motors Philippines, we are now in negotiations with them so that we do the academic training at Xavier and then we send them the students for one uh, semester to get their technical training. So in this way, the in investment in uh, capital and in human resources will not be so major. So this is yet another scholarship program to help achieve the goal of providing greater access to safer quality education at our New Valley campus. So that is certainly something to look forward to. So my dear parents, welcome to Excel 2.0 with your collaboration. And I thank you really for all your support in this past year, your cooperation, your patience. 
continuing in this spirit, I'm sure that this will be a very exciting and very meaningful school year for all of us. Thank you very much.